minutes I've ever come across in my life. Thank you very much. So um, apart from a little change on that climate resilience fund where the, the um, years were just a little wee typo there, that's, um, that's all right. Um, so just uh, the next one is the Arts Centre, which the um, Chief Executive has kindly put a hand up and going to talk to the um, Arts Centre sometime soon. So good luck so with that. So that's just so that we can, uh, the resolution that was made at Council the other day, we can actually discuss that before we, okay. before we make this decision. All right, any, all good? So that, that'll come out in the wash. Next one, please, Pete. Around a park. Can I, sorry, can I ask on the art centre? Are we ever going to meet with the trustees as, at a governance to governance level? That was requested previously when this first issue started first to arise. Yeah. To, well, to try and build a decent relationship, I would, I would think would be. So uh, Mary, it, Mary's meeting with the, the head people, and then it will probably come back that I will be meeting with them as well, and I'll let you know what's going on. If we need to have others there, we will do that. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I mean... I must admit, sometimes it's not clear if one councillor asks for something, whether that's something that the council is asking for. M multiple well, councillors have asked yeah. for that face-to-face -face meeting. So when we had the briefing here, multiple councillors did ask for it because we were asking questions that couldn't be answered on the room. So it's been, it has been asked multiple times by multiple councillors. And, and then what happened was there was a few trustees who went and met with a few people, with the rest of us not knowing about it, and then being told afterwards. And then the whole relationship seems to have deteriorated, as, as people will have seen through the various things in the media. But, you know, the idea of actually just meeting at a governance-to-governance -governance level to work through some of the stuff that we're dealing with around the Arts Centre, I, I personally think would be helpful. But if others okay. don't agree, then that's right. cool. I don't, I don't want to go down the rabbit hole here, but you, you said something, so Tim had a question, um, I'll just let Well, it's just go. following on from that. I don't think 17 elected members turning up to their board is a, is a positive. I think that it would be better to get a, maybe... A, a, well, our council uh, well, going no, no, to war with them through the media is also not a positive. I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, just let me finish. But I think if there are some interested, after Mary has met with them, she could indicate that there are a group of councillors that do want to meet face to face and go from there. That's what I would recommend. But yeah. but if they choose, absolutely fine. If they choose not to, I'm not going to get my nose out of joint if others um, want to meet. I mean, Philip Alderton did or Alder, what. Did ask to meet with me and um, take me for a tour a number of times, which I declined because I thought it was inappropriate because we were talking funding. I also thought, also thought the way that they, in the process that they have, have followed, was not exactly what I would call a positive relationship. And I'll leave it at that. Okay. If we did that meeting face to face, it may not have had to end up coming to all of that. Right. Uh, 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 no, I'll keep, I'll keep going, mm -hmm. please. Arana Park, please. Yeah, uh, could we have the, the Arana Park slide, please? Thank you. Now, it, it has been circulated what the um, Mayor's recs are. Um, one thing that is, um, and you can all read that, one thing that I've got to make clear that in 2020, year ending, for year 2026, it makes a 0.04% increase in rates, just so everyone's clear on that. Okay, uh, um, Jake? Could you just, repeat that, yeah. sorry? Just... So the increase to rates? It, it will increase the rates. Doing this will increase the rates in FY26 by 0.04. Thank you. Okay. Arana Park. Yeah, Arana Park, we're on. In 25, 26. No, 26, 27. Okay. 26. Yeah, not in this coming, not in the blip here. No, not in the first year where we got the blimp. Okay. Perfect. Hey, so, I just had a quick question on that. In terms of the external uh, party for a review, what's the story there? Is that just part of good health? Just to make sure. It's what we did with Fury Made. Yes. So remember an annual plan maybe two I years ago. I do remember. Yeah, it was good. I, it was I, useful. Okay. So it, I just it remember very the problems well that Fury Made were very notable. And I wondered if that was... Right. Okay. Okay. Um, Yanni, and then Tyler. Can I just get some clarity about whether this is removing it from the contestable funding and putting it in to a line item in terms of the LTP? There was an outstanding re request that we would consider 
um, putting these things as I'm line sorry, items. So I just think it would be good to get clarity in the recommendation around that. Okay. Sorry, Anne. Yeah, I was talking about something else. What was it? Sorry. We need to get clarity around um, with some of these resolutions if it's taking it out of contestable funding and putting it in as a year by year line item for the life of the LTP, which, which would be my preference. But yeah, it would be good just to be clear in the recommendations that that was the case. Lead, lead. Yeah, through, yes, through you, Your Worship. Yes, I think it is important that we are clear whether this funding, uh, if you take Orana Park, for instance, which has had approximately 240,000 each year. If we increase it, I think we need to be clear whether that is coming out of the fund it was from or whether it is a separate tranche of funding of its own. So we would want to be clear about that, I think, so that you know whether, to your point, contribute 310,000 in financial year 25 if historically we've contributed 340, is that an increase of 70,000 or are we taking a separate 310,000? That's, I think, the point Councillor Johansson well, is making. Also that it's removed from the contestable And whether grants. that money is then removed from the contestable and is not available yeah. to be applied to some other applicant. Yeah. Take it from the contestable pot. Thank no, you. sorry, it's it's no. two different. Did not. Okay. So, it's, so it's whether it's new money that's coming up on top of the contestable funding. Yes. And and then what it looks like over the life of the LTP. Okay. So the direction is it does not come from the contestable pot. Yeah. That would be. Thank yeah. you. Thank which, you. That's helpful. Which in that case, can you give an indication of what the rate impact? Of that would be because that's an additional that three hundred and ten thousand would be approximately yes yeah. <laughs> yep. in, in, in that year in that year in that year because yeah. so, so to give you an idea seven million is one percent seven hundred thousand is point one so three hundred and ten is just below point zero five so just to clarify it was always planned then if you're talking it was zero point Point zero four, that so it's always planned to be a separate item from the contestable that funding. Correct. Great. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Separate item from the contestable. Yep. And funding. That, so that funding's not coming from the contestable. It's always going to be found. No. Different. So the contestable funding is separate. will remain. Is separate. Yep. And just and just to be clear, so for the life of the LTP, per year they'll be getting aside from the one off three ten, they'll be getting two sixty, for each year. If it's in there, yeah. Well, it's it's not it's not clear from the. It says there's a place on the subject. Can you ask that one to be please? Like FY twenty six. From FY twenty six. Okay, just anyway, the the more clarity we get in the recommendations, I think the better. So can can so we speak to, to the staff advice and then uh, then how that differs in the mayor's recommendation? So historically, approximately two forty pen. Yes, look, there's um, through you. We should. We think there's a bit fur, bit of further work required because there are a couple of options up there, and one of them is that you alternative is you increase it by five hundred thousand per year. Uh, so in year one, and these are just options to be debated. But year one would be five hundred thousand. Year two would be one million, and year three would be one point five million. So you're increasing by five hundred. That's one option, and that is 0.07 percent per annum. So that's uh, for each of those years. That's one of the options. And then if you did what that no assumes no offset of two forty k, what we're saying is it does not come out of the contestable fund. It is actually just an additional amount of money rated and given to them so the contestable funded that's what that is saying so it's separate so it's similar to what the mayor's rec is but a different amount so can you clarify if the mayor's rec is suggesting 310 and fy25 there's no rate impact in fy25 if we take the 310 
if it does not come from the contestable fund, there is a rate impact, impact in FY25. By 25, yeah. That rate impact is about 0.04%. Mm. So that, that one runs into there okay. as well. All right. Um, Tyler, please. Um, I support the, the Mayor's Rec um, in line with the scrutiny we hold Fairy Mead, the Arts Centre and the Cathedral over. Mm. I think that's um, really prudent. And I think, um, yeah, I'm happy to support um, the Mayor's Rec. Okay, thank you. Um, Celeste, please. I'm not sure if this is the appropriate time to ask this question, but in regards to the funding for a runner park that isn't additional, so we're talking about the additional funding, the top up, would we also look at line item the rest of the funding? Or is that something that would be done separately to this? Because we're talking about the extra, but there's still some funding, I would assume, coming from the contestable pot. We've previously had the conversation around pulling out some of those bigger grants, so would we do that as well? Well, my, my thinking is that a runner park would be removed from the contestable because that would become Completely. a line item. Yes. So is that, I just that, want to confirm and that. And we would, uh, yeah, yeah, so it's yeah. correct. It's, my yeah. understanding is... The whole lot, yeah. Yes. So, okay. and, so, and so just so we're all clear that uh, a rana part, you're proposing a rana part becomes a line item and in year one, FY25, that would be a 0.4% impact on rates. Um, so it would come out and be a line item. The contestable pot would not change and so in the contestable pot there'd be an, uh, the, the 240 they traditionally got funded would be there to allocate to somebody else. So is that that's what's being proposed? Yes. 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 Right. So need to be clear what happens after the first year. It's it's down there that there's that there's a placeholder for further funding, but it's sub what but, I'm saying seeing from the mayor's fund, but, it's subject to the review of the model yeah, similar but to for our budget for the ten years. We actually if we're making it a line item, that's we need right. to show every single year how much we're gonna contribute. Yep, and so I think so we can't do it like a placeholder, we can just we can I mean, we have to account for the money. That's why if we um, don't spend it, the we don't CFO spend it. said there was a 0 0.4 yeah. in FY26 and onwards as well. Yeah. So, uh, so we've just clarified that it would also be an FY25 because that's the year it was funded. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, if we give, if we rate that 310,000 in FY25, we don't need to rate. We get, it's not we a don't, rate. That's exactly right. I was going. That's exactly not a rate increase, but it does have a rate. Yeah. Yes, it has a rate yeah. impact, but it's not a rate increase because there's something here that I think might be helpful if I can just explain for a moment. You wish it was. Um, if we uh, rate um, an extra, I'll just use uh, $700,000 because it's 0.1 percent. If we rate that seven hundred thousand dollars in FY twenty five, that that point one is there every year thereafter. So if we go to up to one point four, we don't have to rate point two. We only have to rate point one because it's only the difference between the seven hundred thousand from the first year up to the <coughs> one point four million the next year. So it's only the marginal movement that we're rating. And so that's why if you put this 360000 in, you've effectively baked it in for all of the subsequent years to answer Councillor Johansson's question. So it doesn't have an, any rate increase effect in the subsequent mm -hmm. years. But if you reduced it in the subsequent years, the rates would, would come go, down. It would go down by 0 0.001 because mm -hmm. it's $60,000. Mm -hmm. so. Thank you. Um, we that. have Melanie, please. Um. <clears throat> Two things. Um, one is, this is just talking about the next three years, what's the long term, I know you got this 50k for reviewing the model, but there's no, what they're asking for is a long term stability of funding, and this isn't providing that as far as I can tell. Is anyone going to talk to that? Sorry, John, you're sorry. Yeah. Councillor Coker, the provisions there uh, take an approach similar to what seems to be working with Ferry Mead. The, initially, we fund a, a collaborative review, the, uh, and our future approach will be based out of the findings of the, uh, of the review. 
the, we, we would expect uh, some savings, we'd expect some changes, and we'd get a lot more clarity on the future needs so we could come back to you with some definitive recommendations long term. So the other question is, is that they've asked for increased funding over the next few years, um, like the alternate staff option one, but really we're giving them 20k more than what they've already been getting anyway. So to me, the staff recommend, the, your recommendation, the three, I don't like the 310, I don't think it's enough. I'd do something like 500 every year, some sort of in between. That's, so I wouldn't support it. Um, Phil, can I say something? You're far away. Well, thank you. Um, I support the alternative staff option one, actually, um, with the 0.07% increase a year, 500, 1 million, 1 1.5. And I would like to see something um, something in the outlying years. I wonder if they need some surety going forward in order to attract other funding. But that's personally what I recommend. Oh, so if that were the case we would then be looking at a 2% rise in rates over three years with that, is that right? Because you've got 0 0.7 or 0. Point, or 0.07, sorry, 0 0.07, yeah, so. Yeah. Let, let Boyd, uh, let, uh, yeah, yeah. so three years, so each year, be 0 0.07 increase up for year one, point zero increase for year two, because you only have to rate the extra 500,000 to get it to a million and then 0 0.07 for year three would take you to 1.5 million and thereafter there'd be no increase in the rate. You'd just be rating that amount uh, each year. Okay. Um, right, percentages would get less so as less well, wouldn't they? As the, the percentages would actually get less because our funding gets bigger, but, so it's a proportion of smaller. Quite right, yes, um, uh, Councillor Koki, you're quite right. It would actually drop slightly because we have more rating units and the number grows but we've just really used year one as a baseline because it makes it easier than doing the tapering right to the last decimal point. Okay, Celeste please. For the next couple. Victoria. Sorry I'm going right back to basics, I'm getting a little bit lost. Um, am I correct in understanding that from their, from their perspective, all they're getting from the Mayor's Rec is an extra 20,000 per year over and above what they've already got, and security that it's a line item as opposed to a contestable fund. Yeah. And they've asked for more than that. That's how, through you, that's how I read it, and the extra yeah. 50,000 is for us to go and do, as uh, John Purcell said, a collaborative uh, yeah, review yeah. of what a sustainable funding model looks like. I'm, I'm supportive of the uh, 50,000 allocation for the collaborative review. I could probably, yeah, I'm, I'm undecided on the rest of the money. Okay. Uh, Mark, please. Yeah, I'm a bit similar to that. The fact that, you know, they've come asking us for the 500 and we're looking at saying, well, 20,000 extra and you don't get the chance to get the 240 that you're already getting, so therefore you're going to be only slightly ahead. I do like the 50k um, review, um, but I'm just n nervous that we might be boxing them into a corner, and I'd like us to go with the recommendation here of going and talking to Irana and coming to a sustainable solution so that they're not left you know, worse off through our decision in this LTP. I can't support the 500 without the review because no organisation worth its salt would yeah. give 500k, then a million, yeah. then 1.5 without yeah. any thought of how you're using it. Yeah, and do remember, if we're doing this for the first three years, another 10 years, it could be a lot more that they're coming to. We've got to c come up to work with them to find a sustainable model, because at some point in the future, as climate change is getting worse, we're going to have to really look at where our funding's going. And at some point, like those English um, cities, are we going to end up being bankrupt or do we make hard decisions and when do we make them? I uh, agree. Okay, right. Um, we're up to Sarah. Thanks. Um, yeah, I support the Mayor's Rec. I think that the, um, the review is really important. We learned a lot from how the review was done into Ferry Mead. Um, and, yeah, and I think that we, we learned enough from that that the, this will be a much quicker process for a review, I think. I mean, the board and the and management need to be open to the review, um, which is fine. But um, 
but it's clear from the repeated requests for funding over several years now that they um, they need help to uh, have a, that sustainable model in place, and then we can have surety over the level of funding that that we do. So I think that's a that's a good idea. Thank you, Doug. Pete, is that you're getting enough <coughs> here? Good on you. Any no more questions on that? Okay, so we'll do the next one, please. Anglican Cathedral. Um, in this instance, the staff advice and the Masrex are. Uh, ah, sorry. Uh, I was going to say fundamentally the same, but pe perhaps not. Um, I'm looking at slightly different wording like the version I have, but okay. And I think they're pretty much the same, that we continue to engage with the cathedral rebuilder and report back. Engage and monitor, that's right. Um, it, and it's nothing to do with the LTP, really. No. There's no funding request, per se. Okay, so just keep up for information. Yanni, please. I just wanted, like, there's a number of issues in the through the submitters that would probably be better discussed with central government through the city deal. So, you know, chlorine is, is a classic example. Um, maybe maybe the cathedral, the future of the cathedral. Do we, is there any process to engage around um, talking to central government about... They're doing the that city? as we speak, the cathedral are. No, but in terms of our negotiation with the government over a city deal... Is there a process by which we can put forward ideas for things that we want support mm -hmm. in terms mm -hmm. of funding or so they have an with open, chlorine saving? No, they haven't opened uh, the, the uh, thing for any city deals at the moment. The, there was okay. talk early on about city deals, yeah. but there's no clarity okay. at this stage about criteria around Thanks. city okay. deals, although Thank, lots of Thanks for clarifying the lack of clarity. Appreciate yep. it. No problem. So that that just that just is a work in progress, really, isn't mm. it? Yeah. Okay. The, uh, sorry, Victoria. Can I just get some clarity then on the financial impact in the second sentence there in the event that seven million scheduled for drawdown is suspended? What's the process for a decision around that? And where was the suggestion come from that it would be suspended because it's been collected already for that purpose? Um, I'm just like some clarity on that, please. Mm -hmm. Look, I think uh, through um, through you, your worship. What I think there has been said is that that is an amount that's collected from, and uh, John Fasell will be able to correct me, 2018 to 2028, and it's roughly a million dollars a year, so it was 10 million, and there were drawdowns in two tranches, and I think the la this the second tranche is the one that is the 7 million, and my understanding is there are some milestones that have to be reached or agreed, and it will come as a report to council. Uh, in order for a decision to be made. Is that correct, John? In, in, in essence, the, uh, we are uh, observing and uh, the, uh, uh, looking at the recent developments to uh, make a determination on that. The, if there's doubt, we would certainly recommend that uh, a report go to Council to get clarity to make sure that Council's uh, the intent of Council's original decision-making is upheld. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Yep, Sarah? Yeah, I just said that um, because I was there at the time when we made the decision and it was um, the resolution itself talked about the funds being applied to the rebuild. Um, if the cathedral was going to be mothballed, the funds couldn't be applied to a mothballing process because that's not rebuild. That's, yeah. All right. So it's work in progress, OK? OK. The next one is the Air Force Museum. Now, you see there, I've put a... They, they came in and um, put a very good submission too, but I've suggested that we put 5 million placeholder for 5 million capex in uh, financial year 28 um, to accept ex acceptance of a business case by council by the end of 27. So that's it has no rating impact in the next three years. Is that all right? Everyone happy? For that, you've got to remember also, the Air Force Museum was built and costs us nothing. So when you look at if we do put some money towards a hangar, it's very little for for the benefit that we get out of it. But it's in the next uh, three years. Yep. Yeah, I just say I'm not in favour at this point. Um, mm -hmm. I think that if we had a spare five million dollars going, um, it would be better spent, for example, on our water infrastructure or any of those kind of things. So, but that, we'll yeah. worry about that out there then, okay? 
Sorry. Okay. Yanni? Did you consider taking this from the endowment fund? I thought we were going to get a report well, back. It's, on it's sort of three years out, so it's, it's sort of, I'm, all I'm doing is putting a placeholder in there. There's no. No, but it. Expectations from. They'll put it into their budgets and stuff, right? So I thought the advice we got initially um, was we were going to get some sort of report on various funding options for it. Is that still going to happen? Or is it ahead of putting the money in? Is that you? Apologies if I've missed it. I wasn't aware that we were doing a report no, on funding options. We were just no, considering it through the uh, submission nothing. process. Yeah. Mm. Right. It's just a placeholder for maybe. I, I think it's difficult to do a placeholder for maybe for that kind of budget when we haven't asked the broader community about it. So I would prefer that if we were wanting to do a placeholder for maybe, that in the annual plan that we ask a specific question of the community next year, saying, would you like us to put money on budget for the Airport, Air Force Museum? Or do you leave it to the next LTP, because that's three years out. Yeah if, it, yeah, if you did it in the annual plan next year, though, then that gives the Air Force Museum time to plan around it. Um, and you could have put it in with some surety rather than the next year. Yeah, I mean, up to you. I just would re be reluctant to put five million. It's quite a substantial. It's half what we did for the cathedral, and we had to do a big consultation for that. <coughs> Um, yeah. Okay. Pauline, have you got anything um, you want to add on that? Yeah, I think that's probably sensible advice, actually. Um, and um, because you've put it out into um, year 2028 anyway, the annual plan would be a good place for that. So, would um, that be staff? And, sorry. Okay. It's going to say staff advice for inclusion in the annual plan. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Yep. All right. The next one, I imagine, is. Very simple. <coughs> We're giving them something which they're very keen to do up. And um, in, in theory, it's costing us nothing. Everybody happy? Right. Okay. Uh, moving on to the Santa Parade. Uh, in this instance, uh, the Mayor's Rec is a little bit different from the staff advice. Additional $50,000 from the Events and Festivals Fund in 25, uh, and some further detail to follow there. Mm -hmm. It's a relatively minor amount. It is. It's nothing in the scheme of things. Timothy. And with that funding, could we actually make that a line item? Because it must waste council staff time to go over this again and again and again, you know? Like, we totally understand those that need... Um, to be reviewed regularly, but maybe it's like a business plan. We, we Anything that we're going to make a line item of, we should be reviewing anyway, because we're giving them public money. But I mean, I'm just thinking with this, it just makes it easier. Yeah, easier and longer. So yeah. there, would so be a, there would be a minor, very minor rate impact, because uh, instead of funding it out of the existing fund, you're bringing it out as a line item. It's, it's hardly anything, However, but it is an additional expense. As the events and festivals, uh, fund is now up $280,000 due to an earlier decision, um, could we not take this money across with it and therefore it's got no impact? The, the, the rate impact is 0.001. Yeah. Yeah. The different fund as well. The one we did was Strengthening Communities, this Events and Festivals Fund. Yeah, yeah, but we, we can we can shift money around. I mean, it's a standard thing. I know it can be difficult, but do, I'm also conscious that uh, you know, 0 0.001, 0 0.005, 0 0.007. At the end of this, we could be 15% rates. You know, we we've got to be very careful with what we're doing. And with any business, you look at the small stuff, not the big stuff. So Sorry, that's uh, what you start with. Just saying. Okay, John, you had. Uh... In the course of our investigations, we we posed the same question to the uh, uh, event staff. The, their advice was for the uh, the next two years to keep the funding coming from a contestable fund for two reasons. Firstly, the Santa Parade is morphing into a, a different type of event from the traditional street parade. The, uh, the team wanted to see how that went, the, uh, the sustainability of that. The, uh, the second uh, influencing factor is part of the request is for funding for the Santa Parade to administer and maintain a built facility on QE2 Park. We just wanted the opportunity to potentially explore 
different ways of doing that, whether our community facilities team could assist them with that and essentially save some money. So there were two variables that the events team wanted clarifying before they could comfortably recommend permanent funding. Well, could we extend that to three years? Because out in there, and, and Aaron will be aware of this, to do a two-year kind of thing to try and find any real funding is just, it takes you a year to pull anything together and they want to see some st substance. Two years, I think, is too short. Any business plan is three to five years and you can look at funding like that as, as well. So if we could... Three years from the contest, but keep it in yes, the you keep, if that's what you want to do. But you know, just be mindful. Sponsorship is really—it's getting a lot harder, and yeah. two years is, is just not acceptable. I think. Yep. All right. Anyone else got anything to say about that, Yanni? It was unclear, like in the deputation, that. The state of their facility, which, you know, we, we saw that as being a cost-effective way to reduce the rent that they were paying, and now it seems like there's a whole bunch of maintenance issues with it. Is there any other process that we could work through, like the Capital Endowment Fund, to get their facility to fit for purpose? They were building a picture around where they've come from and where they're at and they only asked for that operation. They weren't asking for other money for other things, they were just telling us where they're at. So adding more money I don't think is a good thing, but if they do come looking for other stuff at other yeah. times, let's help them. But the principle was that by investing some money up front, we would actually save some money in the long term. So yeah, yeah, and then we had... to see that happen. You know? Then we had a pandemic and other stuff and traffic management went through the I mean there's a whole lot of reasons why they're in the situation the, the, where, they, where they are at the moment I have no doubt in my mind that it's going to go from strength to strength Who's, the people that are running it now um, have put so much effort into this what we used to do was give them about 60 or 70 grand which went straight to whoever owned the building previously then we gave them a building which is of it's, well, it's not substantial well, it's, not, it's not brand new but instantly we said, oh, there you've got a building, we're taking the 70 grand off you. So they've been in a, in a quietly sinking boat uh, for quite some time. So we need to get it up because it is an iconic Christchurch thing. It has been brought back to basics and it's got, it's been condensed down to um, the, the basic floats. We haven't got lots of add-on stuff in there. So I think we need to support it. It's, I, I think it's important. So. And that, that three years funding will help them with their sponsorship. And you know, without that... Sponsors won't yep. look at you. Okay. All right. So we'll move on to the next one. Pauline, I think you will probably want to talk about, or I know Sarah will, but uh, Biodiversity Fund. Yeah, I think, um, thank you. No, this is good. This was um, Melanie's, ex councillor Coker's suggestion actually to add 200,000 to that. And bearing in mind that Biodiversity Fund is a partnership fund with private landowners. So I think this is um, this is a good this is a good solution here to increase it over the over the next few years. Um, does it have to come from capital endowment fund? Can we find out what the rating impact would be if we rated for it? I'm just you know we're hearing capital endowment fund, capital endowment fund, capital endowment fund. It's not an inexhaustible fund. So um, that would be my question, just whether that's the appropriate thing, place for it to come from. It might be. But we maybe need some. When we get to the end of this process, we will see how many um, applicate, uh, how many projects here we're flagging to the uh, capital endowment fund, and we may need another look at it all holistically at the end of it. But I'm just flagging that. But um, I do support this, and thank you for recommending it. Okay, and just to be clear, it is 0.03, Pete, in the first year. Well, why is that if it's coming from Capital Endowment Fund? No, no. in the um, Mayor's Rec, it was OPEX in each of the three years, not C. Oh, so it's not C. Okay. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Okay. Celeste? Thank you. I just want to say I support this recommendation. I think it's great. It's, yep, so I'm supportive of this. Okay. Sarah? Um... I support this, but would like to go just a little bit further. I think the the one thing I've learnt is my third LTP now is that every three years we have exactly the same discussions and we make the same decisions. And I 
quite like to see that increase <coughs> baked in for the life of the LTP, not just until the next LTP. That was that was all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with that too. Uh, yeah, I don't know why we're focusing on the first three years here in a lot of these. So maybe that's an, um, an ongoing conversation we need to have, Phil, about some of these. Okay. Thank you. Sarah, uh, did Sarah, Tyler? Um, I've got a wider question. I've seen the Capital Endowment Fund be highlighted quite a lot throughout the um, paperwork we've been receiving. Is there going to be um, anything that updates us on what's going to be remaining if we do say yes to these recommendations? John, yeah, sod all is probably the word that would be, uh, yeah, carry on. Au contraire, no, <laughs> Phil. The, uh, for for, for councillors' benefit, every time that uh, staff have made a, a reference to the Capital Endowment Fund, we uh, update a spreadsheet of provisional uh, our commitments. The, uh, at, at the moment, the, we, uh, we have a, a healthy surplus going forward, the, uh, and we're... Uh, we discuss with our uh, executive team about uh, reporting that back in the process. So have confidence that uh, every time we've made a recommendation, we, we do have uh, funds available and we are keeping track of this. And we would aim to report that back into the process before council made its final decisions. Sure. I just wanted to highlight Dame Sue Bagshaw's submission um, around the Youth Hub and um, see if staff can just make sure that they're keeping their eyes on that one. Uh, yes, we are. We're under discussions. The uh, uh, it's probably better that we report back in a uh, in, in in a separate forum. But uh, that has been uh, provisionally taken into consideration and allowed for in the context of our other recommendations. Thanks a lot, John. Okay. Here, Mel. Yeah. I, I can't remember the values, but um, I know the biodiversity fund was funded all the way through because it was even back in um, the 2021 LTP, and I do remember seeing it being there ongoing into the future. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. Councillor Coke is right. It's ongoing. It is ongoing. Yeah. This is just the first three years we've been from. Yanni. Um, there are a number of submitters that actually commented on the concern at the changes at an operational level around uh, biodiversity and the natural environment teams all that we had in council. So, you know, like I, I'm a little bit reluctant to take this from the endowment fund. I think this is part of what we should do um, as a city, but I appreciate this will be like a funding source. But I just don't think... I no, think it's not coming from Capital Endowment Fund, Yanni. This, this, the recommendation. Yeah. Okay. That that's good. Um, but I, but I just think there was a kind of bigger question around how we are addressing biodiversity in our city, in terms of the operations, and I just wonder who's picking that up. And maybe it's separate than the discussion we're having today. But you know, I think we should look at the big picture, because it was pretty apparent from some of the submissions that we're we're spending a lot more money in maintenance and got a big bigger financial challenge because we're not doing the um, proactive biodiversity stuff that we should be doing. Okay, Bellamy. Bell. So just to check, it's not what's up there, is it? It's what's in here on this piece of paper. Just as, far, as what I'm suggesting in the red. Yeah, but this is saying yeah, 200 each year. Is that what we're... Is that... Yep. Yes. On top of what's already in the draft. So it's not what's written up on the screen. Additional 200 grand of X. In yeah, but the, what I'm saying is, is that screen is quite different to what's on the air. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I, yes. Uh, th the, what's on the screen is essentially the staff advice. And so the Mayor's Rex is to add another 200,000 from OPEX yep. to what is up there. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Righty. Moving right along. Is that all right, Pete? You're happy Thanks. with... Sorry, Pauline. Yes, yeah, so I just think we've... Just for clarity, the 0.03% increase in FY25, is that for the additional 200? And is the bulk of the fund still coming out of the Capital Endowment Fund? No, boy. Um, they get all the same boy. So, yeah, we need, we, need, we need the answer to that because, yeah. 
It doesn't have to be today, but... No, no, John's got waving his hand frantically. Oh, oh but... is he? <laughs> Thank you. No, the uh, the existing fund comes out of uh, our, our general funding pool. It's rates funded and is maintained through the life of the LTP. Uh, okay. 24-25, it's uh, $439,000. 25-26, it goes up to five hundred and fifty-two. So the 200000 is additional on top of that. Thank you, John. Thank you. All right. Perfect. So we'll quietly put that... Who had, who had, sorry? Ah, Tyrone, I didn't, didn't see you there, but Oh, that's all good, mate. Um, yeah, I'm still confused <laughs> about the bike. So, absolutely, but I support the mayor's recommendation for an additional 200 grand per. But, um, sorry, and just on the back of what Pauline just said before, are we getting clarification as to whether or not that's rates funded or from the capital endowment fund yeah uh, that, true yeah so right, um, right if the mayor's recommendation is adopted sorry to relitigate this I, I beg your pardon councillor field for interrupting if the mayor's recommendation is adopted then all of that biodiversity is funded from rates okay cool thank you does that thank clarify you for you perfect yep and and just another point of clarification so We've lumped the sustainability fund into this slide, but there's a separate rec for that, and I'm just kind of just a bit confused as to how. Can Can I just jump in here, please? Yes. Um, yeah. Phil, is that it. okay? Mm -hmm. um, so the biodiversity fund needs to sit on its own because it's a partnership fund with um, private landowners. It's a very different fund. When we get to the sustainability fund, which is the next discussion, um, there's a group of us working um, on um, in response to a lot of the submissions um, from groups that have highlighted that cutting the sustainability fund, there's a community waterways partnership fund and there's an environmental uh, partnership fund that have all been cut and their um, projects will be very seriously um, damaged as a result. So I'd just like to ask the Mayor if we could park the remaining environmental funding d discussions until we've done that work because we might look at perhaps creating a new fund that encompasses all of them, you know, the fund for all, all, all conservation funds. So rather than getting into the weeds today, um, could I ask you to just park the rest of it and so we can come back and we've done that work? Yeah, on the, on the this is the next one you're talking about, Pauline? Yeah, which Tyrone sort of bought into the biodiversity one, but I'd like to keep biodiversity completely separate and then yeah. do an another piece of work to, to respond to all the submissions from okay. the other funds that have been discontinued. So so we'll leave the biodiversity fund as it is in the Mayor's Rex. Is everyone happy with that? Yeah. Okay, so we'll leave that alone. very good, Phil. Thank you. Okay, good on you. Uh, Sarah, did you have... Yeah, it was just going to be a similar point to Pauline in that while we've looked at these ones, the other ones that were cut, so the environmental partnerships, community partnerships, um, aren't unaddressed through this, and and we had quite a lot of submissions on them. So, yeah, if you guys are doing that piece of work, that's really cool, and I'll wait to see, happy to see the results of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Simplification is good. Thank you. So. Thank you. Then, if that's the case, the next one, we, we're just parking that one. Is that what I'm hearing? Okay. I should say the, um, the sustainability fund is yeah, very yeah. different to the other partnerships fund. It's, it, it's a very different terms of reference. I can see the community partnerships and biodiversity partnerships coming together. But sustainability, I would just like to continue. So. All right, now I'm getting confused. Someone please tell that's me. That's right. What... <laughs> that's why we want to do this. That's why we want to do this bit of work so that we can bring it back and identify um, the history of funding from sustainability fund and and where the other funds fit in. So it's just rather than getting into the weeds now, I think we should do that bit of work. Okay. All right. So then, what's the next one I'm bringing up then? Heritage. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah. Yeah. So can everyone see? Yep. And as you've got no additional funding, consult on a new fund from 26 as an option in the annual plan. Your Worship, um, I understand that there may be slight an update on staff 
advice around this one. Is that right, John? Gary? Yeah. There is. Oh. For old John. Yeah. <laughs> Update on staff advice on this one. Do you want to elaborate on that? Uh, do you want to run through the staff advice on this particular rate? Okay, so um, the I think what Boyd might be referring to is looking at what the grants are, are put towards and um, some refining of the criteria. That's going to take us a little bit of time to do and hence the suggestion that it comes back in the 25-26 year. So it's a, just a bit more targeted because the fund is, is not as much, so we need to look at how, how that that funding is targeted. Okay, is that? The advice is just to like not fund it. Um, but now staff advice is saying actually we think we could fund it and we want to look at criteria. Is that right? Is that right, John? Uh, that was the staff advice, yes. Okay, because the, the written advice on the thing here is just not to, not to fund it. Yes. Okay. We can come back to this one. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, the staff the staff advice that I've got in front of me is the same as what my advice is. <laughs> okay. Right, right, we'll come back to this one. Okay. So next one then. Sorry, there, Peter. Yeah. Sorry, just a, a small clarification that uh, through you, Mr. Chair, uh, for Councillor Cotter. The sustainability fund, the timing of that work that's to be done uh, to come back to us, is there any indication as to timing on that? Um, oh, yeah, I think maybe by early next week, I okay. would say. Okay, thank is you. That, is that okay? Is that yeah. all right, Peter? Thank you. It's just, yep. uh, it was just good to know what rough time frame we're yep. looking at. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Thank you. As sooner as possible, <laughs> yeah. All right, so that's that's that one. Heritage Grant, we're just sort of sitting there until we get a little bit more information. Shirley Community Centre. So mm -hmm. it's um, bring forward to start with, 20, uh, 75,000 in year 25, 800,000 capex in 26, and 2.83 million in 27. And OPEX, 40 grand in 28. Now the difference, the numbers of the percentage in, for the first three years is zero for this one, 0 0.01 for the next one, and 0 0.02 for 2027. Have we some questions? We'll go to Kelly first, and then Sarah. Yeah, um, I'm really supportive of this, um, but I wonder whether, you know, this is a um, another situation where we're going to end up um, running the organisation and being responsible for the buildings. Is, is there any way we can incorporate into this um, staff perhaps putting together a trust of uh, competent members of the community to mitigate the ongoing uh, OPEX? Um, John? Yeah, uh, our staff are through the uh, the board chair currently negotiating with a prospective community partner and a uh, <clears throat> sympathetic uh, uh, building company to uh, uh, to develop this facility in, uh, in in a community partnership through the uh, the build and the operation so yes that's what the board has in mind we have a report going to the uh, 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 why uh, why Papa Community Board in early June reflecting that? So that's that's on the cards, and that's how we'd like to proceed at this point in time. So in, um, the, in the long run, it'll end up like St, St Albans Community Centre, where it's totally run and operated by the community. That's yeah. correct. Can I? That's well, that's the that's the goal. Uh, it's the uh, it's the preferred way of doing things, but it needs community board uh, decision making to uh, to to ratify that, and that's scheduled for early June. Mm -hmm. Kelly, yeah, can I just follow up? Yeah. Um, Got you back. Is it possible that the design could include room for uh, offices so that uh, people could rent those and continue to sort of fund the ongoing costs? Hey, um, Kelly, Kelly, you're going too far along the track. 
um, this is a it's a community board project, and all those things are going to be considered. But this is about just bringing some development money forward so they can get on with that exact work that you're talking about. Great. Good points. Mm. Yeah. Sarah? All good. Victoria? Thank you, Pauline. I was just wanted to hear from you on this because I know that you've been involved with this for many, many years. So I was just keen to hear your thoughts on the Mayor's Rec. Okay. Well, thank you. Was that enough thoughts? <laughs> Yeah, stop. Yeah, stop. I, I, yeah, stop thinking. I, I support them. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Uh, but, uh, Yanni, please. I'm just finding this a little bit challenging because we've got other submissions around other community facilities, and instead of looking at all the community facilities requests we've had, we're only looking at one. So, Phillipstown also came in. So, is there a similar recommendation around Phillipstown? Uh, there's no similar recommendation around Phillips Town. This recommendation, the yes supported by the Deputy Mayor, is is a result of a council and a board process that's been uh, going for the last uh, two or three years, simply not in a position uh, with Phillips Town to, uh, uh, to consider that at, uh, at present. But Link, like Link has to part, the design was supposed to be done like two years ago and we've still got a temporary changing shed we're, we're no talking about the plan and purely no community, community centre, I thought, at but, the moment. So, but <laughs> like, so, the feas so my understanding is both of them needed feasibility studies, right? The feasibility studies for this one's been complete. Is that correct, yeah. surely? John? Yes. Oh, sorry, uh, Pauline. Yeah. No, she's, she's, Pauline is in the thick of it. Right. So the feasibility yeah, has been done. That'll be in the report that John's talking about that's going to the board. Don't forget, this is already in the LTP budget. This is just bringing a bit So, so is Phillipstown. Phillipstown Community Centre also sits with this board, and it's definitely on their horizon as well. Okay, thank you. Very good answers. Brilliant. So we're going ahead with that. Is that right, Pete? Read the same on this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, as they do for the temporary facility for South Library. Sorry, sorry, that's probably getting ahead. I'll go yeah, back. Yeah. Are we okay <laughs> from the sports fields? Uh, the sports fields, 85, it, it's doing it as, as we all said, and we discussed this, the hell out right. of it the other day, so, so we should be in good shape. I would have thought, but Celeste has a question. Can you just explain to me, with the sports fields, they obviously come with a lot of operational expense. Have we? Is that part of this... Impact because I can't answer that directly. I'm sorry. It's not part of this funding. If that's your question, this is capital funding. So, for instance, I'm just looking at the distribution of funding across things like regional parks versus sports fields. Um, so, I just want to get some comfort that we're not investing in something that has a. In terms of the wider network, we need to have a visibility of the total costs, not just the cost to upgrade, but the ongoing costs? There'd be no additional OPEX costs. There's no additional OPEX be identified. resulting from this. This, this. this type of investment is likely to have a positive impact on our operating co costs, particularly the artificial hubs taking pressure off winter fields, so it means we don't have to spend hundreds of thousands trying to renovate fields between winter and summer seasons. Mm. So it's going to save money in the long run. Thank you, Doug. Uh, Yanni, please. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify the figure. So before the sports network plan came to council, I asked how much was in the budget. And I was told there's 54.8 million. But in the staff advice here, we've been told that there's um, 85.6 million. Now, I think the, the difference is that there's um, the sports network plan and then there's a whole bunch of other stuff outside of it that's on budget as well. Um, I asked, for example, what funding was on for Napunawai. Um, and in and, and the LTP and was told that there was none, but we had a submission come in saying that they thought it was important that we review Napunawai given the issues there. So... What, sorry, what, what issues are at Napunawai being that it's brand new? Um, so there was uh, a master plan that was done. Mm -hmm. There's been a whole bunch of additional development, including like the new Netzel mm -hmm. Centre. Um, there's been a whole bunch of issues with car parking. Uh, there's been a whole bunch of issues with user paying for tennis courts. So I thought the request was sensible, but... It, it makes it sound like 
Naipuna was a disaster. The way you say it. No, no, no. But it's not a. Dis- it's <laughs> been a. It's been. Uh, it's probably more been a product of its success, which has led to some issues, which the submitter wanted us to to look at. But regardless, like um, in terms of looking forward, we've acquired the land next to the AMP grounds. Yes. Right. So um, yeah, I mean, I've I've put forward some recommendations to you, but I I think the general sentiment was to bring forward funding to do things sooner for the for the sports network plan or for the LTP. So just, yeah, I mean, I'm just flagging that that's what I'll be doing. Um, and I've sent you some suggestions for that. Um, so. So yeah. did you got anything you want to add to that, Andrew? Uh, not really. We'll just sort of wait to see what the, um, the council is quite right. The bulk of the submissions, um, which, um, as uh, Amy pointed out yesterday, came from one sporting sector, want to see things happen sooner. The verbal submissions we heard, you know, articulated that they've been waiting a long time. Um, that's really a, council, a decision for council. We've explored that the, op- the other option that was put forward was exploring our ability to deliver should council decide to bring forward. Um, and that's what that option is based on. But it, it does, as you can see, has some impacts on, on rates if you bring that funding forward. Okay, thank you very much. Good o. Ah, uh, Aaron, please. I, just just quickly to counter some of that negativity, um, I hadn't been to Nupunawai for a couple of years. I was there a couple of weeks ago with Andre for a meeting with the South Island NRL franchise thing, and uh, a positive meeting. I was shocked at how successful Nupunawai was. It was a drizzly Wednesday night. The place was packed. There was kids everywhere. There's grumpy old men looking for car parks. All of that stuff. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Living proof. Unreal. Unreal. I just, I, it, I peeled back my eyelids. I was so shocked at how successful that place was. So, yeah, teething issues, but unreal. Yeah. What a great city. Mm-hmm. What are your eyelid treatments? Going there, 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 I, I yeah. want to have another child so I can, they can play sport. That's how I put yeah. I felt. About it. Right. My wife said I can never visit Napunawa again. <laughs> Rightio. Okay. Can, 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 I, can I guys add to that? Yeah, there, there are teething issues because it has been so successful. So the infrastructure not necessarily keeping up the mm. demand. We had a really good information session at Napunawai last night. Um, thank you to, I think it all staff involved in doing that. Um, just showing what the plans are for the Wigan Road entrance, for example. Um, there are other issues with um, needing more planting, the wind there, uh, and some other teething issues. But staff are onto them. Is, is, is sort of the impression I've got. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so I, I guess what it says is that the, the issues that remain at Napunawai are being addressed, in, in, in my view. There's more to be done, but as a general, yeah, generally speaking. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Now we'll move on to a, an easier one. <laughs> South Library. South Library. Uh, look, again, the staff advice and the Mayor's recs are exactly the same in this instance. Uh, no funding, reprioritise OPEX to increase services at Sprayton. Yes, anyone would like to say anything about that? Quickly, she's on the phone, she won't hear me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. All right, so, all good, Pete. Um, Just, yeah, carry on, Tim. Any money that is spent, I mean, it should go into council facilities that are already existing to enhance them for the future. That would be the logical because if you look at those areas, they're also destined to be, and they are becoming seriously infill. So that population, or any population in the Sprayden um, Summerfield area, is going to is will without question triple. So all the statistics for the poor little Sprayden Library, it's, it's going to be struggling. So we need to enhance it with the money that's put there permanently. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Righto. Um, parking charges at Hagley. Again, both the staff advice and the Mayor's Rec differ from the draft, uh, but they are the same. Um, $4 plus just for three hours on weekdays, weekends free, at a cost of $1.48 million in OPEX per year. Mm-hmm. So th- doing that is going to uh, cost 0.09 in the first year. Is it your hand up, Andre? No? Mm-hmm. Oh, it wasn't hand up, but I was handed that 
Uh, I'm sorry, we'll start with Aaron and then Vic. Yeah, so I think this one will be one that will go around the table, but I was happy with what we went out for draft on, and I'm happy with the original that it's that we don't um, make it free on weekends. We can, it's not free to park outside the library or the hospital on weekends. So um, consistency. Uh, just keep it really, really simple. So I prefer the original. Uh, Victoria? My uh, question's around enforcement. It looks very good on paper and in theory, but unless we've actually got the resources to enforce it, um, so I'm keen to understand whether enforcement is um, realistic and whether we can achieve that with our current resourcing or whether we need a corresponding budget increase in the OPEX for, res for enforcement to actually give this real effect. Okay, good question. Andre? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I knew that. Good question. I'm gonna, you don't need has looked into this, so I'm going to hand this one to Rupert. Say, Andrew, is that you? I'll, I'll jump in here. Um, through you. Uh, uh, we ha currently have ma uh, parking enforcement in the area, so it's just an extension of that. They currently are servicing that space, so it'll, there shouldn't be any extra OPEX there. Mm -hmm. Andre, and then Tyler. Thank you. So, so some raised concern about accessibility, and I was wondering if there was appetite to consider advi just advice on the first hour being free, but if there's not, there's not. All right. Um, we have Tyler. Yeah, I was actually just going to ask about um, what Andrew asked about. Was the first hour free and then potentially charge after that, seeing the feasibility of that, if staff can maybe bring something up? Sorry, just so, just so I'm clear, Aunt Mel, yeah. just so I'm clear, it's first hour free, Weekdays and weekends, is that what you're saying? Uh, weekdays and then re the rest of the year's recommendation associated with it. Oh, so sorry, what you're saying is first hour free during the week yep. and weekends are still free? Yep. Yeah, yep. I think it's important that we have it free for people to go and use our parks. One of the problems exactly. we have got, and it can happen... Huh? Can... <laughs> One of the problems we have got is there are a lot of people, and, and it's fair, they're doing it, they're not doing anything wrong. They're going and parking there and all day and they come into town, which they're allowed to do. So here are some ways that we can get some um, uh, revenue back. If you, if you look at the uh, Old Boys Tennis Club, there's actually quite a lot of people, families going to that playground at the gardens. And they'll only be going there for an hour and spending $4, spending $4 to go to a playground. Okay, come on. And yeah. same thing goes for Margaret Mayhew. There's actually free parking at Margaret Mayhew too around the back of Margaret Mayhew. So I don't feel like we should be hindering is, them. Sorry, I, don't, I didn't know that. Is Margaret Mayhew free for Around hour? the back, then on the street is, is paid. Okay. Um, but on the back, around the back with the barbecues, are is free. Mm -hmm. um, so that's it is sort of in alignment with that. But first hour is the one that I'm really wanting to focus okay. on. Okay, fair enough. Andrew, you were going to say. I just want to give some context, and then Rupert might want to talk about the first hour free. Um, the only reason we're allowed to have car parking in Hagley Park is to support recreation. So there's quite a difference between managing that activity versus the street. So you just need to be mindful of that. The only reason legally we can have car parking in Hagley Park is to support the recreation, just as a <coughs> background for your thinking. So, Rue, do you want to comment on the... Yeah, there was just some challenges when we explored those options around how you actually manage the first hour free. Um, obviously, if everybody's only in there for an hour, the revenue is going to be way down so it's hard to put a number on it but also um you know in other other parts of the country there's first hour free but you're still paying for the other two hours so you're still paying whether you're there for one hour or three hours so there's some complex but we can bring you some options with that okay because yeah you get the machines right and some of us a lot of people didn't know that they'll pay and they didn't know that the first hour was free so then they'll be paying for two hours instead of one it becomes quite complicated i understand that and around enforcement, I mean, they could be there for an hour and a half and not get pinged for it, which is absolutely fine too, in my opinion. Um, okay, right, moving along. We've got Melanie, then Sarah. Uh, I support the draft. Um, I support the draft. Um, if pe yeah, people can bike and bus and whatever. That's what we do. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sarah? Yeah, I support the draft. Um, and... Just while people are concerned about, you know, maybe paying $4 for an hour, that's not the case. Actually, when you pay for your, at, a, at any parking meter, 
you actually get to choose how long you're staying. So it might be, um, was it four dollars, yeah, a dollar fifty or something for an hour or whatever it is, a dollar twenty or something. It's not four dollars for the hour, so it would only be sort of shorter. Um, you just choose a shorter amount of time. So uh, it's also really difficult. Four dollars for three whole hours. Mm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if you choose one hour, then it's way less than four dollars. Um, it's also really difficult just doing one at first hour free because people go, oh, first hour free, I don't need to put any, I don't even need to go to the machine. And because they haven't been to the machine at all, it's really hard to, for the enforcement officers to tell how long they've been there, which means they get pinged for not paying. So na nationally, it's been really, really difficult. Here you comment, here you comment. Um, Sarah, yeah, Yanni, please. Yeah, uh, I mean, you're next, Tyro. What I took from submitters is a number of submitters want us to actually charge it um, like Margaret Mahi, uh, Napunawai, um, uh, Metro Sports. Um, and it seemed that we really do need to come up with a kind of coherent strategy around car parking charges at our um, facilities. Um, so I wasn't keen to support this coming in now. It, it seems to me there's just so many inconsistencies with with charging. And, it, you know, it just, yeah, I, it sits uncomfortably with me that, you know, we, we, we wouldn't take a, a strategic approach to this rather than just using this as a way of raising raising revenue. I know that some of those other um, things were apparently were looked at by, by council staff when this initially was being put forward to us, but there's nothing here that reflects the submissions that we got around what we might do to extend the car parking. So yeah, I, I won't support this at this stage. Um, I, don't, I don't agree with charging at the Botanic Gardens, Hagley Park for the kids going and using like the playground or using the green space. Not, um, but, 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 just, yeah. but following on from Andrew's comment, it's not families that are generally using the majority of that car park. It's generally people going to work, parking their fee for a day, which then brings into the problem that people could turn around and take us to court saying that is actually not being used for resident. Yeah. So a number no, of... No, 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 recreation. So therefore remove it. So following on from what um, Tyler said, why don't we look at it as an option just the first two hours, the, the cost for an, an hour type thing. So there is, so they're getting the first hour free, but they've got the option to stay there two hours. I know it's not ideal, but we've got to come up with a solution rather than someone wandering around there for 40 hours a week. Yeah, so it is time limited at the moment, and that was the other thing. A number of submitters didn't seem to realise that it was time limited and said we should make it time limited. You've also got other car parking on the other side as well, which... We're not charging. For Andrew them. has a point of clarification. I just want to pick up on Councillor Scandrett's point. Um, we do get a lot of frustration, particularly in school holidays, when people are trying to take their kids to the botanic gardens and the car parks are already full. People that know they can come to work, park in the botanic gardens car park, walk through the gardens and come to work. So that's one of the that's one of the background reasons why we we know the car parks are full in weekdays of people that are not recreating so part of the proposal was to encourage people to use it for the right reason <coughs> or you can generate some revenue that of course helps you know with the city I'm good so, so to be clear you're you're wanting to hold long-term car parkers to account while also encouraging recreation in the area right. that's yeah. exactly what we're after that's great and, and we can we're talking about we're talking about Hagley Park here this, this, this only applies to Hagley Park. Mm. Moving forward, we can change things Can't going delay forward. Everything this is thing and form a strategy. On okay, righto. Right. We're getting off. We're getting so off piece here. Was the feel for LTP or for your alternative? Where did we have people landing? Okay, I've just got a couple more. Mm -hmm. oh, Aaron, Aaron, please. Just on people that are asking about the first hour free, it's looking at that price. It's about the first hour and forty-five is free. Um, yeah, almost two hours is free because that's what you pay to park in town for one hour. So uh, just down the road. So uh, it is a pretty pretty fair price. And if we have a family that have a very bad situation that write in, I'm sure our staff and their fines will forgive them. So Thank you. Um, two more and then we'll move on. Uh, Tyrone and then Mel. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I, so not for the first time recently, I find myself agreeing with Councillor Kewan on this one. Um, so no change to the, yeah, I just, just keep it simple and I, I think that the, the charge is really fair. But also my question is that 
what do we what impact I mean, what use do we know that that car park gets to support Saturday sport and what impact might that have on it? Don't have to answer that now, but like I'm kind of interested if it, if it makes it easier or harder for, for, for cars to get in there to support Saturday sport. Uh, it's, a, it's a good question, councillor, and I guess that, that a lot of the feedback was about making weekends free, presumably for that very purpose. I suspect that if we put charging on weekends in place, you should expect quite a lot of um, Kick outrage initially, um, and then there'll be a period where people um, get used to it. Um, that's probably all I can really say at this point. Okay, um, thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Mel? Uh, sorry, I just had a question. It, there's, uh, we all think of the, I always think of the main big car park, but there are other car parks, don't there? So is this going to apply to all the car parks in here? Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, and the other question I've got is, well, if we're charging um, $4 plus just for, for three hours, and that's cheaper than on-street parking, will that actually stop um, people that are going to work paying because it's still pretty cheap? You have to come back in. There is a time limit of three hours, I understood, or something at the moment. It's a, it's a good question, and I know Rupert spoke to the transport team who raised the, that very point, that it's a little bit cheaper than the street, and should it be consistent? I guess we were trying to be mindful of... We, we need to encourage people to recreate and find the, find the balance. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Don't want to pin... Don't, don't want to penalise them for having fun. And last, I Celeste, then Cal. Um, I actually support what Andrea and Tyler, the comments they've made. I, I think with families visiting the park, they're not just visiting it during the weekend. In fact, they might avoid it then. So I'm more comfortable in making sure that we are providing for those people. And two hours, I think, is a good amount of time. Okay. All right, so we're, we're bordering we just, on debate here. Carry on there, Cal. Can we just review it after... A year or six months or something. Try it like and see what it works. Mm -hmm. After eight months, so where do we? What do we want to actually achieve here, Mary? <laughs> well, that's, that's where do we get on the Phil, no I think you, I might, you might need a sh Phil. You might need a show of hands on this. Remember the old loose show of hands, just on the draft or alternate one or alternate two. The old loose show of hands. The old can loose I show of hands. In, Phil, um, can I just jump in and ask as a process? Like, we're not. I don't think it's right to be having a vote on things. I think what you're looking for is consensus and possibly the way forward is the ones that you don't get consensus on, you'll just put separately on the day and we'll have a vote on the day. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you're right, Pauline, there's a lot of different points of view here. Are we better off just to yeah. Yeah. do it that way going so forward? So the Mayor can put forward yeah. whatever is his motion is and you can vote it on the day. So the Mayor will yeah. potentially still put up a rec and you can vote for it on the day. Okay. There'll be a batch that there's potentially going to be consensus on, others you'll vote Yep, for. and I see you've got your hand up, James. Oh, uh, yeah, I, sorry, I was just a bit slow taking it down there because I totally agree with Pauline. I think, you know, I agree with actually the plan because, um, but we'll have that the debate on the day, so okay. I'm comfortable with that approach. Yep. Right. There we go, that's cool. Right. <laughs> Akaroa. Out of the frying pan and into the fire. Akaroa wastewater. In this instance, um, the draft, the staff advice and the mayor's rec all align. Um, there were some submissions on this, but we've got three in a row for the first time. Uh, so there's not really much I can add to that other than to uh, open to discussion. Happy to go ahead as planned. Yanni. I just don't know how we can um, justify spending this amount of money. Um, so I'm, I'm deeply troubled by the scheme with the huge cost increases and the concern that people have raised in the community around the, the benefits. So I just don't quite understand the legal point of view in terms of our consent and the timeframes. But, you know, this does seem to be something that is um, spiralling out of control. I know staff gave a really good analysis of the concerns that the community were raising, but yeah, fundamentally, it does seem like a very, very expensive solution. Can I just say I haven't heard anything new from the community that wasn't considered as part of the original hearings panel process. 
we did know at the time that there was still likely to be some over wastewater overflows during really heavy um, periods of rain. Um, yes, the costs are mind-boggling, um, but the actual decision itself and the option, I still think, is the best one. It's not just a case of it was culturally insensitive, but the RMA um, provisions were, were super clear about if you had a feasible other option, you needed to do that instead of going to the harbour. Um, and anything that goes to the harbour means that you have less water resilience when it comes to climate change. Water's really scarce on the peninsula. It's going to get scarcer. And having the highly treated wastewater still kept locally means that there's options to use it for other things in the future. Whereas if it all got highly treated and then out to sea, you've actually lost that opportunity. Um, but I haven't heard anything new from the new submissions. Um, yeah. Okay, so Yanni said, Aaron? Uh, yes, um, I, I don't have anything to disagree with Sarah's position on that. I was on that hearings panel as well, and it was, there was never going to be a clear winner. It was just one of those hearings. It just, there's such strong positions. But um, I think the only other uh, thing that's come into this is the water storage at the top of the hills raised by the fire brigade. So this can have another benefit to that community if this project is continued. And so f going forward from here, we need to see those storage options being able to be used for firefighting. Um, yeah. Um, if this is the way we go, then either there needs to be a, a, a couple of storage dams or those big tanks need to be able to open up for the monsoon buckets to fill in the design. It would make no sense to have water stored at the top of the hill. <laughs> it can't be accessed in a fire. I don't know how dumb that sounds now that we know, but it sounds really dumb. Just just to give, just roughly, I, I was out with Pauline the other day, and just to give people an idea, I don't know if you're aware, um, you sometimes see them on the back of um, uh, the Sports and Recs guys or sometimes farmers. You have those cubic metre, one metre white <coughs> box, ICBs, I think they call them, with some wee, pipe, wee steel pipes around them to protect them. If you've got in your head what one of those looks like, 28,000 of those is the size of that tank or the tanks that are being proposed. So just, just I'm not saying don't do it, I'm just letting people know, try and get that in your head because it is one big tank. It, oh, it is a lot of water. And I think going forward, and Tyrone, you're going to speak next, going forward, I think after what we've heard from staff, we should be... Uh, Burrowing down, that's not the word to use for sewer, that's not right, um, and sorting out our infiltration from stormwater. That is the, the biggest thing. It's all very well to have what we're pumping is rainwater. So it, the system will work very well if it's um, looked after properly. So uh, otherwise we could be in, to coin a phrase, shit streak. <laughs> Tyrone. Where are you, mate? You've had enough um, run away. I'm, thank you, thank you. Sorry, I'm I'm um, completely aligned with your thinking on this, um, your worship. The um, just on the I and I stuff, the gully trap. Uh, our staff came in and, and um, uh, presented to the to the community board the other day and talked about improving gully traps um, on properties around Akaroa, which I think would be would be really really helpful. But just in jet, like as a general principle, like we do need to keep the money on budget, whether or not there's any. Um, change in the way we do it is kind of neither here nor there for this discussion. This is just about keeping money on budget. There's no rates impact. And, you know, we, we have to keep it there. Um, the only thing that I would raise, uh, and also actually like just to just to support Aaron's comments around around fire resilience as well, I think that's a, we would be crazy if we didn't didn't look more deeply into that. Um, but But my question would be, given the level of interest in this project are we are we still thinking that the time frame set out in the LTP is is um, you know uh, works with that or is it you know we've got three million on budget for next year is that I mean are we going to spend that or not I don't know well it, it's the um, I mean that's, I, that's the question I would have I don't that doesn't need the to consent be runs out Tyrone the consent runs out so it has to 
We've got oh, yeah, time on. On twenty thirty yep. or thirty one. Yeah, no, I'm yep. with you on that, Aaron. Yeah, so I think. Yeah, I'll just be. And your comments are correct like... that we can't take it off budget at this point. <laughs> cool, man. Awesome. Yeah, and yeah, Let's regardless of what the, what the approach is. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, Pauline, are you trying to get in there? Oh, I just supported Tyrone very, very succinct. We might as well move on because it's on budget. There's no change. We have to go forward. And from the briefing last week, I, I think I remember um, that they're starting planning to start next year. Well, from what so I understand, yeah, okay, I won't, okay, that's enough. So we'd leave. So staff advice and my advice, uh, Rick, is the same thing. So it's on budget. Let's get going. Okay. I've still got a couple of quick. Yeah. Just yeah. maybe on that, Phil, because there's a number of councillors that weren't around when this decision was made. Uh, I think in the very near future, we need an update of why that scheme was chosen, what it is and what it delivers and why the alternates are no good, because we heard from a lot of concerned people. So I think we should have that update for everyone here to feel comfortable with the plan going forward, spending that amount of money. They could just re they could circulate the um, hearings panel report to council, maybe. It, it is, there is no doubt, it is one hell of a lot of money to spend on not that many residents, but we've got our backs to the wall and we haven't got an option, so my my thoughts are zero in and get this, get this infiltration sorted out, even if we have to go property by property and say, guys, we will help you sort this out because it will be better for us in the long run. Okay? Right. Um, Mr Mayor, can I just quickly just make a comment? Not that many residents, but actually quite um, high numbers of people during peak seasons and Akara was like quite an important um, linchpin of our sort of our destination planning as well so yep thank you yep I, I, I wouldn't expect anything less from you saying that all right thank you um, right we'll move on to disposal of council properties uh, Tyro, uh, Tyler sorry um, just have two questions um, the first one is uh, Waipata Street there were some submitters that we're concerned about the potential future link between Craycroft and the shared path on the Cashmere stream. Um, are we still proposing to look into that? Um, the advice that we've given back is not to. The reason for that, and, and John might be able to come in on this, the land behind there is rural uh, and it's been assessed for potential force uh, rezoning and subdivision doesn't have sufficient stormwater capacity and the planners do not believe there is a reasonable path to ever rezone that land. So therefore, it's a moot point. Um, we won't be able to be in that position to create a link through to Kashmir Street stream in that location because it will remain private land with a rural zoning. No worries, thank you. And the second question is around the Sutherlands um, one, around Takuru. And the only reason why I'm bringing it up now is because yesterday we were talking about the retention ponds and runoff um, and wondering if this might be strategic to hold for the Port Hills fire. I'm not sure exactly where it's situated, so I just wanted some advice around that. So the, the piece of land we're talking about is extra that's not required. So we needed to buy a whole property for the Takura uh, wetlands. This bit is on the slopes and the hill above that area and is not required for storage purposes, which is why the project team and Three Waters have put it forward for disposal. Okay, thank you. Brilliant, thank you. Um, Yanni, then Sarah? Uh, yeah, I'm um, quite concerned around the properties in Scarborough that were being sold off. Is, is there any advice to come back on that? Oh, um, so there were big cracks going, going through it. And it was quite close to the cliff, which, you know, just came down in the big earthquake. And uh, there were a number of smaller things that residents did raise as well around some simple stuff, transactional stuff that made made sense, probably outside of the separate to the didn't disposal. Staff, didn't but, staff, take, staff took uh, that offline, I think, because it wasn't really an LTP issue. Is that right? Well, do we need to separate out the properties where people have raised concerns, flagged? Um, I'm sure Bruce is things. doing that. We're not, yeah. we're not selling a hand grenade to someone that's going to cause them grief, are we? Bruce? No, before they even get on the list, we get them uh, reviewed by uh, our geotechnical experts in terms of the hazards on them. Uh, and uh, for an example, I think you're, you're talking about um, those properties um, where one of the submitters was concerned about the cracks. The areas of the cracks will be retained. We will um, 
uh, re um, reconfigure the properties and only sell the bits where there are no risk and no hazard and aren't covered by the hazard overlay. So we'll end up owning all the areas where there are risks and hazards. Uh, the potential and the advice from uh, Andrew's team is that they'll generally be revegetated if possible. Uh, and we're only selling the bits that we don't need for that recreation purposes and don't have uh, the hazard overlays on them. And in some, a... some cases, well, there might be five sections and every one of them's got a little bit of a problem with it and we might be only be able to reduce them down and sell two sections out of the area that had five. Is that, is that right, Rick? So we're not handing over a whole lot of rubbish to people. And is there a um, strategy for the Port Hills red zone land? Like, Do we have a kind of plan for what we want to do like we do for the flat red zone? This is just talking about getting rid of council owned properties. No, I understand. Not a strategy that, for the whole You know, if we started if we did this approach on the flat um, for the red zone, you, you might get quite a quite a lot of angry people. But we've got a plan. I'm just wondering, is there a plan for the Port Hills red zone so that we know strategically what we want to achieve with the community as a city? I uh, presume the council is referring to land that we will retain, red zone land that we will retain. No, sorry. That, it's cool. If we don't have a plan, that's fine. It's just, mm -hmm. just okay. wasn't but, sure. If well, if it is the land that is been, not going to be disposed of, that will get covered by the Port Hills management plan. There has been discussions in the past about having a sort of some sort of plan for the Port Hills. It'll go into a Port Hills management plan. The stuff we're hanging on to will become ours in, in the same Port Hills management plan. Sarah. Uh, thanks so much. So I'm in favour of the actual recommendation, which the only recommendation that's here is to keep the money on budget. It's not specific to the individual properties. Um, I will have um, some potential changes to the individual properties, um, just maybe around that Redcliffe's um, park. With the, there's some parking and stuff on, um, on some land behind the old Redcliffe school that's being used for community purposes, that kind of thing. But... Um, the recommendation here is just to keep the money on budget. It's not on the specific properties. So I'm happy to talk about the specific properties at a different at a later time. Date, yeah. um, the, you might remember that the community board came to council um, at the beginning of this process um, before the draft was signed off and requested that the Port Hills um, red zone land got done separately um, because it wanted it to be part of that whole Port Hills management plan area. Council decided otherwise, that's up to council. Um, and But the properties that aren't sold will be part of that Port Hills management plan planning. So. But we don't, what, um, Bruce has gone to a lot of trouble to um, find these, uh, work through these properties that we want to sell. And, you know, we're mad keen on um, getting rid of surplus stuff that is of absolutely no use to us. And, um, I think what uh, the team have come up with is, is very good. So we, we've got to let them get on and get on with, with what they're doing. So, And that's, correct me if I'm wrong, Bruce, that's, that's roughly this amount of money every year. Yeah, we've budgeted for three million um, for, three for, years. for three years. Yeah. And then I think the budget sits at about two million afterwards, but that'll need to be revisited in of future. Course. Yeah, and for debt reduction. So great, that's, thank you. Righto, everybody. Are you doing that press the button or what are you doing? <laughs> okay. All right. So we'll go on to rating for renewals. Um, there were very low level of submissions on this one, I think, because of its technical nature. The draft, the staff advice, and the mayor's recs all line up. Okay. Everyone happy? Sarah? Uh, I'm not happy. I think that it would be quite good to see um, an option that only does maybe half of that. Um, I'm really concerned that we're going to be paying more for the same amount of work. Um, so by, by borrowing for those renewals rather than rating for those particular ones, while we save um, ratepayers uh, an increase now, we end up charging them much more than that later because of the interest costs and things. So I'd like to see an option that maybe was uh, 0.9 rather than 1.8 or something like that, that just... that. Um, that was lower, so we could look at that. Okay, that'll be one that we'll probably go and put it up as an amendment. We'll talk about it on D Day. Mm. Okay, so that'll be one that you uh, will be for the. Yeah, yeah we can bring forward uh, 
a, um, an option around that um, on adoption day. I just need to work through because when we send it to audit, I just want to make sure what the model would look like, but we can work a model on that. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, of an option. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Councillor Tiverton was asked if there's something she could put up as an amendment. Yes. Or something yes. that's a viable amendment that could go up. Yes. Yeah, yeah we can. Mm -hmm. Yes. And at the close of play today, I'll be stepping through the amendments process. Mm -hmm. So how, how to do that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah, we can do that. All right. You yeah. spotted it. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's clarified that up. Thank you very much. So City Vacant Land Differential. Uh, supported by, I think, the majority of submitters, um, Draft uh, Advice and MASREX Align. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Celeste and then Jake. Um, yep, that's great. I support this and there was quite wide support, obviously. The only question I had really was just tidying it up in terms of the areas that are covered because mm -hmm. some of the submissions talked about the fact that <clears throat> sort of the gap between Sydenham and the Central City, there was kind of an area there that could be looked at. Um, and then also in terms of the New Brighton Commercial Core, it sort of fell slightly short of some of the areas that as progress continues, we might need to look at. So just, just a slight tweaking in terms of the scope for those areas in Sydenham and New Brighton. We'll take that offline unless John Meek is online and can comment. Okay, um, and Jake? Oh, yeah, almost identical and just that um, also want to know what our ability to tweak areas is balancing our need to consult but also our um, obligation to listen to what people say in LTP submissions. Yeah. So just if we can right. get some advice we'll, from legal about that. We'll provide some additional advice on that. There will be some legal matters as well on that, though, uh, so we'll just need to make sure we've got that all covered. It's just balancing that risk it, first. It, it, know, did, it did work. I was sort of wondering whether it would work when we brought it into the central city. It certainly did. It gave people the incentive to tidy up their land, and they'd get the, they wouldn't be penalised if they could prove they could tidy up their land, so it makes the place look tidier, and that's what we're all about. I, I told you that at the time, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> did you? <laughs> okay, so they're right. Okay, so next one is. Um, oh, I had some comments. Is it? Oh, visitor accommodation. Is that right? Yes. Yep. So, sorry, Mr. Mayor. I had some comments about the, 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 the city vacant land differential. Oh, yeah, far away. Sorry. Sorry, yeah, okay? I didn't, didn't see you here. Sorry. Head. That's all good. Um, so, because I was initially reluctant about it, but. Um, I went around Littleton with John Meeker and he was really, really good um, in explaining how it would impact. But the thing that I want to avoid is unintentionally punishing landowners, um, you know, uh, just kind of they fall through the gaps of, of how it's kind of set up. Like it's hard to explain, but like there is a uh, there is potential for like inadvertently punishing people. And I'd also like us to look at, at ways in which we could actually support landowners in developing their land because it's quite problematic in Littleton as well. Mm. Okay. So perhaps I can just comment on that. The system is set up to avoid that situation. It's not just mm. the, the rating. Uh, there's remission process as well. There's advisory process. Um, so we can talk through with... Uh, Councillor Fields on that directly. I'm just speaking, um, I'm thinking of one specific site in Littleton actually. Um, but anyway, that's all good. Thank you. Righto, so we'll go on to the next one, please, Pete. Oh, sorry, I didn't see you. Yeah, um, I, I was always of the position that it should have been everywhere um, because a, a crappy looking commercial site mm -hmm. anywhere is detrimental to the businesses around it. Uh, but it'll be nice after a year that we monitor the effects of doing this here and then look at elsewhere. But also the other one is residential properties. When people have land banked a residential site and it's, and it's just long grass and manky and got cars dumped in it and stuff, that's not a big seller either. So, I mean, after going into the next year, let's see how this goes and then maybe look doing it elsewhere or retracting if it's not working, having the effect. But it'll be a good one to monitor. Fair enough. Okay, now we will get on to visitor accommodation. Actually, Phil, can I just support what Aaron said um, around residential properties? Is um, I get an incredible number of complaints about uh, derelict properties where people are not fulfilling their responsibilities, where rubbish is collecting on site, um, 
and it's very hard to get them to do anything about it. Um, it yeah, it's a constant cause of frustration to people in the community. Okay. I think there's a difference agree. between Quickly. those where people are living in the property and it's really un unkempt, yeah. and the land bank or the land bank or the other things where they actually the, the property has been abandoned for whatever reason, and it's just sitting there and becoming dangerous and vandalised and, yeah. and stuff. Yeah, totally. Agree and whether with we that. whether there is something we maybe we can get some information on whether there is anything we can right. do about those ones. Yeah. We are now moving on to. The next, there you are, far away. Anyone who wants to tell us all about it? Or oh, just, just the, the introduction. Look, this was about rating visitor use of accommodation uh, in a residential home as a business. Uh, it generally was supported by submitters and the draft advice and recommendations all align. Okay. Everybody happy with that? I can't believe it. Amazing. Move on to the next one. All right. Oh, this one's pretty... It's the same. Same thing. Everyone happy with that? Charities? Okay, far away. I can't keep up. Uh, through, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, this also seems to be completely aligned, so um, incorporating the heritage rate into the general rate. If it makes life easier for anyone working in this building, it's got to be a good thing. I think that was the purpose of it, a bit, as a <laughs> proposal. We live in... We live in Okay, righto, so that's okay. All right, can I just check what the heritage rate, uh, yes. what, what's it been used for? Because actually I thought that having a separate heritage rate is quite a good way to put funding aside for heritage, given how many requests. Because the art centre, we've got the museum, we've got, I know it's got a levy, but yeah, the cathedral, um, there's a number of other heritage buildings that we are considered funded. But, but the, the, correct me if I'm wrong, Pete, the, 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 you're just incorporating it and it's not going away, it's just getting... I'd, I'd just like to give our finance colleagues a moment to figure out uh, what happens to it. Okay. All right. My instinct would be that it's put to the same use well, as it well, always was. Shall we come back to that while you're getting it some advice? Circle back. Is the, and here oh, hang on. No, and we've, here we've, it comes now. We've, <laughs> Um, yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, no, pretty good question. So the intent is just to, like, the rate's still there, but it's not called a rate. So it's still sitting within the, the rates. And so it, rather than um, collect money in advance or behind, actually use the expenditure and the rates at the same time. So we're um, spending uh, more aligned with actual. So we're we're rating, but we're not sort of building up a fund or, or anything. But what's okay. the money currently being used for? I thought yeah. this was the one that went to the art centre. It was, um, I think it was initially, to my memory, it was uh, collected first fund heritage at the art centre, but then also to fund some of our heritage buildings. So the city heritage buildings that we own and have to repair. That was my memory of it. The art centre is a separate target of the rate. Right. Well, is the art centre not out of this, the, this heritage fund? So we've currently got the right. cathedral rate, we've got the heritage rate, and we've got, we had an art centre rate. So that's correct. So the, we're only talking about the heritage rate here. Yeah, and so it's the one that we're now just going to um, put in okay. with the other rather than have it separate. And we're just trying to simplify it by bringing two into one. It's not going to change that the, the figure will be the same, won't that, it? That's correct. You know, the amount's still being there. We're not. We're not saving anything. It, it's just tidying it. Mm, tidy it. That's exactly the word we need. Thank but, you. That's great. I mean, I always just understood we had the two, one for the art centre and one for the cathedral. Um, oh, so. yes. Yeah, we definitely had that. But I thought the I thought we had one for the art centre and one called a heritage rate rather than an art centre rate. So the cathedral was one and the, this heritage rate was a second one. Yes. And it was going to initially be used right. for the art centre and then when that funding ceased because it was a $5 million, it would be used for other heritage oh, buildings. Yeah. No, you're right. There was It was for the museum redevelopment um, scheduled over three years from 24-25 and $53 million for provincial building, yeah. old municipal chambers and the art gallery. Yes. Okay. So the art centre was from something... So that was a separate one as well. 
as was the cathedral. Oh. So yes, so by the, mistake, sorry. That, that's right. In the annual plan for the year we're currently in, there was the heritage targeted rate. Yeah. Um, and that was planned to be over a thirty-year period, and it was to uh, collect. Just having a look. Um, 23 million towards the Canterbury Museum development over three years, as uh, Councillor Johansson has said, uh, money, uh, capital expenditure associated with preserving the heritage, the provincial chambers, the old municipal chambers, and the McDougall Art Gallery. Uh, then you had the Special Heritage Art Centre targeted rate. Mm. Uh, and that, of course, was for the art centre. And then there was the special heritage cathedral targeted rate. And so there were sort of three, mm. if you like, heritage yeah. rates. So, so, but like the art centre one hasn't stopped. So that's going until um, 2031, 32. I'm not sure the time. No, so I can tell you the time and that. Mm -hmm. That's correct. That's As is correct. the I'm not sure one. the time frame. Yeah. But yeah. Yes, correct. Yeah. Okay. So, All right. Yeah, oh, sorry, carry on. No, oh, we, we through, yeah, I was just going to say stand by. We can check when it goes through. To no, no, I mean, I've got it. But I mean, I guess the question is, given that we're having a big discussion about some of the heritage things, um, and and obviously this is a separate a separate one for our own facilities rather than external. Um, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't know whether there's any merit to um, looking at continuing a heritage rate to fund the heritage request that we've had in the plan. Specifically, my recollection of the um, the heritage targeted rate was that we were very clear when we consulted with the community and set up the terms for it that it would only go towards those projects that were specified as part of the consultation and the requirement. So, if we were going to change the destination of the funding that was collected through that rate, because it's not just a general heritage one. Um, we would probably need to consult again. Um, so that specific funding has to be used, I think, for those projects. So it would be good to get some advice on that, especially if we're looking at using the funding for other things. Um, yeah. Okay. So, and the next one's very similar, isn't it? It, it is. Well, so, Phil. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Phil, could I just? Yeah, sorry, could I just say? Look, probably the one of the advantages of having a targeted rate is the visibility. And this discussion we've just had actually demonstrates how important that visibility is and the criteria around it when we set them up. So there's a danger of losing that if we roll them into into the general rate. So I'm kind of veering on the on the side of retaining them as a target rate now, personally. Yeah, but what I'm, what I'm trying to get out of here is um, th there'll be no difference. The figure will still be there. It just won't be collected. It'll be just collected under two under one. Well, no, is that, am I right? I know. And the num people will always people will always be able to see the separate numbers. Like if we collect two dollars, one dollar for each, it'll be still there. Be able to see it. If I could just clear, the amount will still be collected. It'll be still going to the fund. It just won't show on your rate instalment notice. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Correct. Nothing's being changed from that inner workings. All we're doing is changing the front end Simple. on and how we collect it. I think we might think we should come back with some. I think we might need to come back with some ad advice about whether it's rolling all of these three or just one of them, and also whether if we, if it wasn't a targeted rate, whether we could later at a later LTP change the purpose for that rate because it would be collected as a general rate. So I think those are some of the questions. So can we we can provide some advice back. Okay. To so uh, okay, sorry, Jake. You had a. You probably all sort of. Oh, I was just going to say. I think the conversation has highlighted the exact opposite, which is that in spite of an attempt to make it clear what we're spending money yeah. on, that the special rates are doing the exact opposite, and none of us are clear at all. Um, yeah. uh, I think that we need to focus on actual clarity in our consultation document and and and, and on our website. Okay. Well, how does that help you, Pete? We'll come back. <laughs> Well, it, it, it informs the next one, which maybe has the same principles in it of um, ease of collection at the front end versus the purpose to which the funds are put. 
and where they go. So um, I understand from talking to Russell just now that the answer is much the same. Um, I'd still like it to see it rolled into one. I really would. It just makes life simple for you guys. But I, th I think we're hearing that people would like us to come back with a bit more information on how that would work. Yeah, that, that's the heritage one. I'm talking the second one now, sorry. Yes, the active travel rate, yep. It, it is, it is, it is. Okay. So, so am I correct that the, the draft advice and recs all say the same thing? That's accepted, but we need to come back with some clarification. Yep. Right. Yep. Um, could I could I possibly suggest, and it is only a suggestion that because we've actually got through so much content, it might be a, a good moment for um, um, a little break to allow the finance team to. Oh, yeah, I've got one more, and then add we'll up look. the consequences. Uh, no. One more. One more. Yeah. Yes, one. There's okay. one more left. Yeah, and All then right. we'll, we'll leave you alone. <laughs> we might go and have some lunch or something. Probably. Is that thing to do? Oh, right. The last one is um, use of subvention credits. I think it's there's going to be a lot of conjecture, and I think it's great what we're doing and using it. It got us out of jail last time, so to speak. Um, and I was always told back then that it was a it was a one hit wonder, and we wouldn't have any more. And look what we've got. So it's good. But if it's going, if it's going to be a point of, um, we'll just we'll just do it on the day. Is that? If I could, um, my preference <laughs> for, with my finance idea, not to do it on the day. We'd like to bring it back and have a discussion. Um, we put a number of options up. There's about four different options up on how the money could be used or not, mm -hmm. um, using for rates, spring it over, or using it to repay debt or some other special purpose. Mm -hmm. So we'd, I think it would be worthwhile having that discussion beforehand so we could Absolutely. get a better scare. Yeah, yeah it's a good idea. Now, if, if anyone out of all of what we've talked about today, has anyone got any burning issues, please put them forward so that the team can um, uh, navigate their way through them. And um, it, like, what I'm trying to avoid is surprises on the day. To, the end of the day is going to be a bloody great surprise anyway. But, but to just try, just try and do what we did in the annual plan last time, which worked very well, and just get some of these ones sort of put to bed is what, what we're after. So we will have a breather for lunch. Yep. What about, uh, it's 10 past 12, quarter past one? Is that right? One fifteen. Thank you very much, everyone.